Okay. I hope everybody, dear guests, dear presenters, and dear colleagues, my name is Stefan Nettesheim. I'm the managing director of Reliant Plasma, and I'm very pr proud to present our first dental webinar today. Um, I have to look back for a couple of years when I first visited the EDS in Cologne. That's that uh, huge trade fair where the whole industry comes together and shows the new products. And I was really overwhelmed by the range of materials, products, product ideas, processes, and uh, the innovative character that the whole industry has. Um, on the one hand, this is really a creative industry, um, and uh, we can see that the product has really enhanced and getting better all the years. On the other hand, it's also quite conservative because we have uh, proven solutions. And a major aspect of that is, of course, that the quality of the dental product is really in the focus. And it's all about trust uh, and quality because the dentist has to trust its suppliers and the technician. And the patient has to trust the dentist to get a, a, a good and durable result. And that should last maybe whole, the whole life. So the expectation is very high. And how can we bring this um, innovative character of the industry together um, with new technologies? And I think the only solution to that is to work on really scientific evidence, to work on solid ground there, and to rely on practical experience of many of you. And our goal now is to bring our experience that we have gathered in industrial um, environment for plasma treatment of surfaces and cleaning of uh, surfaces using plasma devices in industry um, to dentistry. But I have really to emphasize that uh, we are really at the beginning of a learning process and you are all welcome to give us our your input uh, because I think that could be a nice journey, a learning journey that we can have together. And uh, therefore, we will be grateful for any suggestion, any contributions. And I'm sure that um, we will show you some examples uh, where already in practical world we can use our devices and increase the quality. Uh, and uh, only within a few seconds, uh, uh, chair side or in the dental laboratory, we can improve the, the quality of the products and bonding. And I'm sure that uh, these interesting application examples uh, will create uh, some feedback from you. And you're really welcome to give us that feedback. Um, in advance, uh, I want to really thank, thank you all to participate, and especially the presenters, uh, to show us their interesting work and also their um, work that uh, has been done with our products. Um, we are aware that an online format is not really well suited for a practical world. And so I would be more than glad if uh, later in this year, uh, some of us could come back and uh, keep in touch and join in the lab and do some joint work and develop some joint projects and products. So that, that is maybe the, the major goal that we have for uh, our webinar today, to just motivate you to enter into that journey with us. Thank you very much. So I give uh, uh, the microphone back to Andrea Werkmann, our moderator, and we can start with the interesting content of our webinar. Thank you. So I think you can already hear me. Let's see if we can get a picture going as well. A moving picture. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you very much to Stefan for the introductory words. Um, my name is Karina Little. I'm uh, part of the application team at Rely on Plasma. 
and it is my great honor and pleasure to present to you today our Pisa Brush PZ3, um, not as an industrial solution, but as a solution for the dental lab. So um, I will be asking my colleague Andrea to give us um, a little intro so you know what you're up against uh, for the next one and a half hours. Uh, just a little also a little idea of who we are as Rely on Plasma for those of you who don't know us. Um, first of all, the world from our side. Um, so we can see here the first thing that we want to look at is the map. So um, looking at the map, uh, we can see ourselves here in Germany situated spot on the middle, but all around us we built this network of partners all around the world. I think uh, some of them are joining us today. Thank you very much for coming in, our partners in the industrial sector uh, that are keen also to learn about the applications that we have learned uh, in the last couple of months uh, from experts and pioneers in the dental lab, and we'll be coming to that in a bit. Just a small bit of history to go up front. So um, you can see here on this next slide that the piezo brush technology has been around for quite some time. So 2009 was our first piezo brush delivery. At the time, the piezo brush, the cold plasma was only possible with noble gases. So, and since then we have quite, um, made some changes, some, some improvements, some new developments on our uh, technology. And in the meantime, we have also um, collected some prizes along the way, some certifications. You can see we have the, the Dean ISO 9001. And very recently, in January of this year, we also got our certification for medical equipment. So this is 13485, you see it here at the bottom. Um, and you can also see that we are, of course, since 2018, a member of the TDK Group, or big international company, and they are supplying the heart of this technology, which makes us the unique supplier of these handheld devices. All right, so let's jump into the agenda, so we can have a look what we have in front of us. So the agenda being, um, I'm going to start, uh, I'm very happy to start and give you a little instruction on the device itself. After that, Alexander Weber from Highfield Laboratories in Augsburg will be presenting their take and their applications in the dental lab live to you. So I'm very excited about that. And afterwards, we are taking a deep dive together with my colleague Eva um, and she'll be um, presenting loads of very interesting uh, research projects that have been done with our devices um, in the recent years. After that, um, I'm very much looking forward to our Q&A session where we'll be discussing your applications, your questions, your input, and um, um, this is also something I very much look forward to. So um, just before we get started, four more little points I have here. So, um, first of all, this, all of this is being recorded, so we have a recording set up to, for you that you can re-watch and share, um, and also that you can, um, as they watch time and time again, we will also be uploading presentations, of course. Currently, you're all muted, but that shouldn't stop you from asking questions, so please feel free to use the chat box in your panel. Um, and we'll be working the questions in uh, where they fit. Um, otherwise, as I said, Q&A session at the very end. Very much looking forward to it. And now, let's jump right in. So, this is the beauty here, is what I'll be presenting to you today. I'm going to bring you closer to me, just a sec. So don't worry about this little guy, he'll be assisting me. Um, and now, I'm going to do a little unboxing here. So this is the device as, oh, okay. I just, I'm just hearing here that um, we have a bit of a problem with our network. So we'll be switching off uh, the camera. So this guy is going to be back in a second. Don't worry. So we hope we're going to, we have a few problems. So we had a, a webinar this morning, our morning in German, and we had a bit of an issue as well. So we hope we will be back in a sec. 
this is quite a cliffhanger here. <laughs> Bear with me. So Andrea is figuring it out. Perfect. Okay. So now we're back. Please also use the panel to make sure that if um, there is any technical problems, just let us know. We want you to enjoy all of our webinar. So I hope we can retrieve that image. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, um, we're <laughs> I'm very sorry. This is uh, this is just the way it goes. Um, I I really hope that uh, a lot of you are actually um, joining us from their own applications. So I know that some of you joining us already have Pisa Brush in their in their applications. So we'll be very happy to hear from them um, later on. We're still. We'll, we'll, so we'll do the unboxing as soon as we finish the, the, the technical issues. In the meantime, we'll go back to the presentation. We'll do a bit of theory before we get started on the, on the real deal. So um, theory being, just a sec, will we switch the slide? So the device I'll be presenting to you in just a second when we get uh, a hold of, of our video image again is the world's smallest plasma handheld device with PDB technology. So this device is based on the piezo uh, dielectric discharge, and we will hear more about that later. First of all, I want to explain a bit about how cold plasma works in general. So on the next slide, you'll see the effect that I'm going to show to you live uh, as soon as we get a hold of the video again. Okay, so um, we'll be looking at uh, what we call the effect of surface activation. So we're looking at wettability. This is the number one key um, indicator for how we can change surfaces with plasma. Um, and the main component here are really droplets. So if we have droplets on a surface, the way they change or the way they behave on the surface is really detrimental to how we characterize a surface. And we'll see later on that this um, surface activation or the wettability of the surface is also very important and also connected to bioactivity uh, and biocompatibility. So uh, this is a very key factor that we'll, we'll be discussing um, in just a sec. Let me now, my colleagues have abandoned me, so I'm going to try and switch uh, the slides here so we can, we can have a look at um, the issue of wettability. So here on this slide, you can see what I was just discussing. So on an untreated surface, we typically, when you think of plastic materials, we typically have a round droplet. So this means that the, the energy of the surface is very low. We have insufficient wetting and typically weak bonding behavior. After the plasma treatment, the droplets flatten out. So now they are flat. We, our surface energy is increased. We have better wettability and a stronger bonding behavior. So um, next slide, I'm going to show a little graph. Don't be scared. Uh, here we have um, a couple of different materials um, that are uh, mostly based in the industrial applications, but you can see here the third one is PMMA. And this is a material that is, for example, also used in bite splints or mouth guards. Um, and we can clearly see that compared to the untreated samples, the plasma treated material has a much increased surface energy. You don't have to remember all of this. Uh, it's just important to know only a couple of details. So 50 millinewton per meter is typically something that our colleagues from the adhesive companies tell us is a good value to start with. So you can see that in the untreated pristine state, the polymer materials or the plastics have a lower surface energy, which means they are very hard to bond to. 
after the plasma treatment, this surface energy increases. And we can clearly see, this is something we'll be discussing um, later on, is that it also increases specifically in the polar part. So the polar part is something you can see, um, the surface energy is not made up of just one aspect, but of two. So one of the is the dispersed part, which is determined by non-polar liquids. And the other is uh, the polar part, which is determined by polar liquids, such as water, for example. And I hope uh, that I'll be able to show that to you in a sec. So bear that in mind, uh, we'll be looking into uh, these aspects. Um, but we also want to look into applications, of course. So switching to the next slide. So just a sec. So we're really struggling here with the bandwidth. So I hope I hope you're still enjoying this uh, as, as much as you can. Please keep letting us know your feedback from our technical issues that we have here. And um, I'll be just going on here uh, for for a little while until we get all of this back into place. Um, I hope you can see the slides and hear my voice. Uh, that should suffice for the moment. This is an application uh, for printing in industrial lab, in, in, in the industrial environment, say printing barcodes. Uh, it's very crucial to have good wettability of the surfaces that you print on, especially plastic materials, as we just discussed, where with the, the poor wettability, we see this beading together of the ink droplets. And the better we um, activate our surface, the better we um, have wettability and surface activation in place, we can increase that um, bond to the surface, but also, of course, we increase the quality of the print image. So you might ask, we're in the dental lab now, so what does that have to do with us? So it turns out that there is actually an application that's fairly similar. Um, and this is uh, what the, the dental technicians call um, color individualization. So imagine um, you're getting a crown, and now this is, say, a zirconia crown, um, but the color of it doesn't match the color of your teeth. So uh, in, in detailed um, work, these technicians color the, um, the surface of the zirconia crown, and you can see here, without plasma treatment, there can be some aesthetic issues say, for example, a conglomeration of pigments uh, where they're not supposed to be. So now you can see here at the edge of the crown, we have this kind of brownish color. This comes uh, uh, from the effect that now you have droplets of this glaze, what they call it. So color glaze or stain glaze um, pulling together on the surface and not being really homogeneous. Whereas on the right-hand side, you can see that after the plasma treatment, we are able to really glaze in a uniform way on the surface. We have a lot of uh, customers in the field that are already uh, having huge results, great results with these um, with these uh, plasma pretreatments, where they say typically when they needed three firing processes for foundation and then individualization and finishing, now they can bring um, bring it down to maybe just one firing process, which is a huge amount of a time that's um, that's actually saved uh, by being able to deposit more of the glaze on these highly um, repellent, initially repellent surfaces. So after uh, the um, plasma treatment, we have this activated surface that really holds up on the colors that are put onto it. Just out of curiosity, I'd like to ask if you would be interested in taking part in our little short poll where um, I'm just very curious, since we don't have you in the room, unfortunately, um, uh, for a raise of hand or a click of yes or no, who uh, here does this color individualization process? So uh, is this something that you do in your lab? Just take a quick minute to answer this poll. I'm very curious to see who is already uh, um, taking uh, these applications in their lab. So we'll wait a second 
till we get answers here in our little poll. So another half minute and uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed here that maybe by some magic we also get a better connection after you've finished your poll. After finishing the poll, um, I'm pretty sure that not all of you have come across this application. So we'll be showing you a little video um, that we made in collaboration uh, with Norbert Wichnelek from Highfield Laboratory and uh, Rosie and Horst Jung from Till and Jung, uh, which will give you some, um, some insights on the people who are not aware of these very interesting processes. So um, I think we finished our poll. Oh, okay. So um, we only have a couple of you, so that makes it even more uh, convenient that we have this video for you. So 30% of you know this process and 72 are uh, haven't come across it yet. So we should roll the video. Um, so let's have a look at this. Mm -hmm. So here in this video, um, we can see the process. All right, yeah, we, we have a bit of a delay here. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit fidgety, I have to be honest to you. Um, the video we're about to see, as I say, shows the process as we imagine it. So imagining uh, a process where before um, the real process takes place, there is this pretreatment of the zirconia surface. So there's monolithic zirconia and there's high polished zirconia, which is even harder to, act, to, to paint on or to glaze on. And here we can see the monolithic um, zirconia surface. And here again, this is what we don't want to see. So these color pigment accumulations in some areas that kind of, uh, um, that uh, we have when there is no activation of the surface. Here, this is what I say, this is very intricate. Um, so it's a real art really. When I saw it first, I was absolutely amazed. There's a color template that is used to really match up the color of the surface. And here you can see the firing process. And you can imagine uh, it takes about 15 minutes to heat up that oven. And in the meantime, the colors might have run so uh, what we want to achieve, as you saw in the last frame here, is a uniform uh, glazing of these um, beautiful surfaces to make them aesthetically appealing. All right, so um, when talking about um, wetting and wetting behavior, uh, what comes along with it is also adhesion. So what we wanted to show you with this slide we have here is um, that we have, what we do is basically we build little anchor groups that are, that correspond to the groups, to the bonding groups that we have in the liquid, be it, for example, the stain glaze that you saw earlier, or be it an adhesive, for example. So when I said earlier, polar groups, this is what I mean here. So you can imagine that, for example, an epoxy glue or acrylic glue, um, there are a lot of these, um, these oxygen-based polar groups. And if they go onto a surface that doesn't really have this group, like for example, the plastic, then there is this very weak bonding. But with the plasma, we're able to generate the counterparts of these bonds and therefore build a very strong bond in the corresponding bonding sites. And this, as I said, goes along with the high surface energy and the increased wettability. All right, so let's have a look at uh, an application from the lab. So again, we have zirconia crown and here you can see a titanium abutment. So these two need to be glued together and uh, you can imagine that the plasma can um, play an important role here. In our industrial applications, we uh, hear time and time again that plasma is used to remove primers from processes. So we've uh, witnessed also in the dental lab that um, a lot of you use the primer. Currently, uh, we're using plasma as an addition to the primer, so as a pre-treatment to the primer. But um, eventually, we would, of course, like 
to, um, to replace these, these chemical primers. Um, looking over to Andrea, she's shaking her head, so I'm, uh, we have to postpone the unboxing for when we get a better connection, but I'll keep on uh, discussing this application here with you, since this is very important because it has to do with the technology we use. So it makes a big difference for our specific technology if the surfaces are electrically conductive or not. We'll be getting more into that later on. But beforehand, I want to show you another little schematic that can explain um, another issue that happens a lot also in industrial and in, in dental applications. And this is what we call fine cleaning of surfaces. So we talked about some materials not having the bonding sites. There are materials that do have them, but they're inhibited by, for example, thin organic layers that are on the surface. Um, we oftentimes see, for example, lubricants and so on that are removed in, a, in, in another process. But for bonding, we really require uh, the participation of the uppermost atomic layers. So typically only 10 atomic layers really participate in bonding. And now if you think about um, the fingerprint uh, on your surface that you want to bond to, that those are a thousand layers um, that you can't really penetrate at all. So you're really inhibiting um, your strong bonding. And if we're talking about, as I said, nanolayers, um, so really monolayers of, um, of organic contaminants, these can be removed by the plasma. So you can see it here, we kind of free these uh, lovely little bond sites that we need for our adhesive processes by using the plasma on the surface and removing these organic contaminants by oxidizing them and turning them into um, volatile components so they can be removed from the surface and ensure that we have a good bonding. Another lovely example from the lab here, this is a material I hadn't come across before. This is chrome cobalt molybdenum. And this is a process uh, that is done before veneering. So veneering is something that's also a fascinating thing. So here, typically they use, um, the dental technician uses a metal primer on this material, after that an opaquer, and then uh, he can go into the process of veneering. If the adhesion between the opaque and the veneer and the metal is insufficient. Um, the problem can arise that there is reclamations, there, there's claims, there's complaints from the customer if, because of course these pieces are, are very unique and very expensive at some times. So uh, going through a very painful process of having to redo these can be prevented by using plasma on these surfaces as a pretreatment to make sure that the quality is improved and that kind of closes the loop again to our industrial applications where plasma is used as a quality ensuring method to make sure that even in stress, in, in stress situations the bond holds. All right, so we'll be moving on to the technology itself. So here you can see, um, don't be distracted by the moving part this is actually a moving part, so um, not as extreme as you see here in the picture, but this little, little piece of equipment is uh, what we call a Seraplas transformer. It's a piezoelectric transformer by our mother company, TDK, which makes our um, technology so unique. And as I mentioned earlier, we do not require any noble gas to ignite this plasma. So this plasma can be ignited in atmospheric conditions and it's also a plasma that is in a temperature range below 50 degrees Celsius. So it's safe to use, it can be used on temperature sensitive materials, as I said, as for example, PMMA um, or other sensitive materials. And it works by using um, a low input voltage to generate a very high output voltage. And that then generates the plasma discharge in the air. So, um, this brings this little issue with it that I already kind of hinted that now, of course, if you have very high electric fields, what happens if you bring some, some, something electrically conductive into that field? And we'll be looking at the two modules that we offer um, that kind of pay tribute to these effects. So on the left-hand side, 
you see uh, the standard module. This is the module that we use for non-conductive materials, for example, the zirconia you saw, or the PMMA. Um, so these will be the typical materials that we use the standard module on. But if we move to metals or other conductive materials, we require what we call a dielectric barrier. In our case, this is a little glass part and it requires uh, a plasma, um, plasma device to be fairly close to your surface. So the lovely thing about the Pisa Brush PZ3 in, in comparison to its predecessors is that we now have methods of uh, controlling and seeing what happens because the device is now so smart that it tells you if something is wrong. And um, for example, something being wrong would mean that you would be treating metals with the standard module. The device will fairly shortly tell you that there's something not quite right. And on the other hand, if you're treating non-conductive material with the module near field, uh, it'll also tell you after a while that there's something not quite right. Now, in the example I showed earlier of zirconia and titanium being bonded together, now, of course, we have this issue of these two materials that are conductive and non-conductive fairly close together. So we took that into account and we made sure that there is a setting in, in our device that helps you to change from a failure mode to a warning mode. Um, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed that we'll be getting back the connection so I can show you in real time what I mean here. In the meantime, uh, here again, a little explanation because we've kind of come across it quite often. If the distance is too high between your conductive substrate and your dielectric barrier, there is no plasma being generated. So think of it as a counter electrode, really. So you have to come fairly close to your substrate to have that little shower curtain of plasma on the surface. But there is also the effect that even if you're not directly working on the conductive surface, even if, there, if there's an intermediate layer of insulating material, you can still work with this um, module near field and have the activation on this thin insulating layer. This is something that can be very interesting. For example, as I said, when veneering, if there's an underlying cobalt chromoleptinum surface and on top of that, some kind of zirconia surface, you would probably still want to use the near field module. But as I said, the device is smart and it will tell you what's going on. Okay, moving on to the display. So this is what I really wanted to show you. Um, so in the display, we get loads of information. I would still recommend to everybody to read the manual, but I know I, I myself, I'm, I'm kind of a quick starter as well. So here uh, we get all the information we need. Um, the top, we see the module that's currently detected in the device. So in this case, standard. Um, currently we have two modules, standard and near field, but we're already working on different kind of modules with different geometries. So these will be coming up towards the end of the year. Very much looking forward to that as well. Also, for example, um, modules that can be used with noble gases. Um, this is another little teaser for our webinar tomorrow where uh, Jan Willem Vartius will be discussing the use of noble gases with our technology. Then we have process tool modes. In this case, stopwatch is the default. It just counts up the seconds, which helps you in your initial testing phase. But after that, you can switch to countdown or metronome mode to get um, a very Kind of precise treatment, say if you experience. So the typical times that are reported to us from the field are when working on crowns uh, under a minute of treatment time, just to, to give you an idea. So you can set a minute or 30 seconds um, that will run down and then shut down the device after the countdown is uh, uh, completed. And here uh, at the very low uh, end of the, of the display, there is a power setting. So this is barely touched as I hear from the field. So most people work, just work on 100%. But these three little squares here are very interesting. So they tell you the status of plasma, fan and temperature. 
that one is probably the most interesting. As I say, if there's something not quite right, um, it'll first go on to critical, it'll be lighted up in a yellow color. Say, if you're too far away from your surface, from your conductive surface with the module near field, or if you're um, on something conductive with the module standard, and then it will switch to error uh, if you have that in your setting as soon as this is um, something that goes on too long. So we'll be um, we're uh, again again looking over again seeing the shake of the head. Ah, I would have really loved to show you the unboxing and the and, and the real the real deal. But um, I'm going to show you the scope of delivery the, and key, key data of the, of the Pisa Brush professional set, as we call it. So it comes with all you want, really. So it comes with um, the, the electrical power connection. You can see this is something you can use all around the world. We have connectors for um, US, UK, um, Japan, Asia. So really, um, you can take it anywhere. <laughs> And you can see here that we're working at 18 watts. So 18 watts is something at this lower power level, um, the efficiency of the band is really amazing. We'll be hearing more about that from Eva later on in the research projects. Um, the design, as you um, probably know, is a handheld unit with plug-in power supply and integrated fan. So no need to inject any other gases into the device. And as I said, the plasma temperature below 50 degrees C, very lightweight, very ergonomic. This was something that our developers really focused on, making sure that you work long times with a device that's still comfortable for you. And you can see here these treatment speed, treatment, treatment distances and widths. These are more uh, interesting for industrial customers, but nonetheless, um, this is something that is just um, in interesting to know. So wrapping it up here, we'll be looking at another little uh, summary of the device itself. So as I said, a handheld device, the smallest one with, with our lovely unique PDD technology. We generate this highly efficient cold plasma in order to optimize the adhesion of processes like gluing, glazing, bonding, veneering, for example. And we can use it on a wide variety of materials, for example, plastics, metals, glass, ceramics, etc. Here again, a little reminder, if you have the device in your hands right now and want to get going, make sure to look at uh, the little labels on the modules that also tell you which one is for conductive and which one is for non-conductive material. As I said, standard for plastics, near field for the metals, in short. Okay. The application is easy, safe, and intuitive. It's really something that can be, um, is, is really easy to use. And with the now new process control tools and power settings that can be accessed via the integrated display, we have a really good grip on the processes. So this is something that um, the colleagues worked in after the feedback we got from the previous generation piece of brush PZ2 that's based on the same technology but wasn't quite as smart as this new device. No external gas supplies required unless of course we're, we'll be looking at the modules for multi-gas use that will be coming up this year and uh, we have the integrated fan to generate the plasma uh, in atmospheric conditions. Plug and play, just stick it in your wall socket and you're ready to go. Here, um, uh, this is my last slide, and uh, I, I regret that we can't, um, due to the network, we can't show you a live demonstration, um, but I really want to, um, to give this on your way. The wettability is something that we see as a crucial indicator for the quality of adhesive processes. As I say, um, you look at how the, um, the wetting behavior is and how the liquids behave on the surfaces and that gives you an idea of how the bonding process is going to be. For that we use here um, contact angle measurements or testings. These are typical for industrial applications and um, the, um, the, the real number that we'll be looking at will be the surface energy. So this will come across in the research project as I said. 
If we have uh, contaminated surfaces due to coolants, lubricants, release agents, and so on, here the plasma can help by oxidizing these contaminants and um, removing them from the surface because they can really decrease the quality of your adhesive process. And uh, in case of plastics, as you know, they show low surface energy even if they're perfectly clean. And here we can generate good adhesion and perfect wettability by using the plasma to generate these polar anchors. So all in all, cold plasma increases the wettability of surfaces to optimize adhesive processes. And I'm very much looking forward to having um, Alexander Weber from uh, Highfield Lab show you these processes now live. I hope they're not having the same issues as we we're having. As I, as I say, I'm very sorry. Um, I really had hoped that we could get the video across from here in Regensburg. And we're keeping our fingers crossed that we have better connection from Augsburg. Looks looking good. So uh, everybody, cheer up. Hello, hello we guys. Have Hi, hello. lovely to uh, see you. Quality is okay uh, at our place. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Well, that's 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 a relief. Um, okay. So if there are no questions, I'll be handing over to you, Alexander, and just yeah. give us a small introduction on how plasma can help you in your daily work in the dental lab. Yeah. Uh, thank you a lot for the theoretical side of this plasma uh, tool. Uh, first, let me introduce me uh, myself. I'm Alexander Weber. Uh, I work at the dental laboratory of Norbert Wichmanek in Augsburg, Germany. And uh, we have worked with plasma uh, for seven years, around about. And we work uh, with this um, for main reason uh, for packaging and cleaning. So we have for example, here we uh, do our works inside of this plastic bags, plasma cleaned, and then it goes to our dentist. So it's very clean and very nice. Here is an example of our work. We do a cleaning with plasma. It gets cleaned uh, ultra fine on the surface, and the surface gets activated for optimized wettability. And it's uh, free of oil and grease and so on. And when it's ready, put off. We put it inside of this little bag, and then it goes away. So that uh, was our procedure. Uh, with the big equipments, we have here big equipments for plasma. It works with argon, and uh, it's about 50 kilos. So it's big <laughs> equipments. And two years ago, uh, we got this little tool here, and that's the important part of this. Uh, everybody has to understand. It's just a tool. You don't have to uh, study this big instructions and. Uh, so on. No, the important, uh, the most important things we write on this little tiny page, and that's all we have to know. Cause three things: we have to turn it on and off, and uh, we have the uh, modules one and two, easy to change. Uh, like it said before, the one uh, is for uh, uh, non-electrical conductive materials and the other for conductive materials. And there are the uh, statistics for model one, uh, two to 10 millimeters, you have to uh, put range and the model two, uh, 0 0.5 to two millimeters. And more you don't have to know, that's all. You get uh, this little bowls, of glass or ceramics. Uh, we work them with them uh, really nice. And we built for us this little stand. It's really simple, really good to work with this because you can put your work under the plasma 
and do your stains, your glaze, uh, prepare all thing, and then just remove it, and you don't have to waste time. Um, <laughs> I have to say, uh, I'm not a native English speaker, so uh, I will do my best to keep it simple and uh, understandable. We prepared here a lot of materials, of works, and I will show you now some cases. Um, first of all, we start with this crown. It's a zirconia uh, high polished crown. And all of you know, it is really, really difficult to put some stains, some uh, colors on it uh, to, to, to individualize it. So I show you uh, how it looks like before you uh, treat this with plasma and after you treat this with plasma. So before you treat it with plasma, you see how the color just uh, gets some drops. It uh, don't equally on this uh, on the whole area. You can do the colors very much of this, yes. But now I will clean it here. Water. Okay, this color is just a uh, red color that's for your perspective to see it better. Now we turn this on. And this work has to be around 10 to 20 seconds all around the crown a little bit. Now you uh, perceive a little smell that's ozone and maybe you see some sparks, but uh, don't worry, it's uh, not harmful. Uh, it's not risky for your health, uh, health at all. So, all thing is all right. So, I think that's enough. Turn it off. Such simple. And now, I apply some color again. And I uh, think you see the difference. No drops. It's here, the uh, plasma don't, uh, it really don't enough time uh, under the plasma. You see the difference here without plasma. But everything else where I have the plasma enough, where, where it's set uh, enough time uh, to, for the effect, it's very really good evenly on the surface. And I think so uh, we can work with this results better. Okay, then we put this away. The next one, it's the same effect. I show you this on this uh, case. It's a big bridge. And we have here some tweezers uh, with synthetic uh, tops because how it's uh, said before, metal uh, don't work with this uh, model one for non-conductive. So we have here uh, extra tops for this tweezer. Um, it's not treated with pl uh, plasma at all, so I will treat one side of this. Slowly, give it a time. Again, the ozone smell. Okay, turn it off. You see, great, such a nice effect of plasma. This is what it makes fun to work as an dental technician. And here I try it on the other side. It's not with plasma, you see. The color didn't uh, flow evenly on the surface because it's not activated, this is not clean. Maybe some fats or grease. So, very nice, really. Okay, put that away. For the next step, I show you mm, the pros of the stand again. <laughs> because if you have this uh, ceramic plate, all of you have this ceramic plate. 
you can just put inside your works a lot of here is another ceramic plate you have all things there you have abutments you have bridges you have crowns veneers everything i put it on and now just let it a little bit work 10 to 20, uh, 20 second, uh, seconds that's our experience it's enough and you can move it maybe here again a bit under so the plasma can go down to the whole crown and so it works with everything you have here's another example of plate with abutments here is a little bit tricky because here's a uh, titan with zirconia but we talk about it uh, when it's just do for a couple of seconds a, a tiny bit then nothing happens no failure it's all right but if you have to do big like uh, this then you have to change the model, of course. So I'll stop it at this. Okay. Now the uh, next one, I prepared here a little bridge, normal bridge. I show you, I touch it with my fingers now after plasma and not touching. <laughs> here is a, uh, this is already finished, this one. It's for the uh, our, our finish to see. And here is a little bit uh, with stains, individual size, but uh, we do around 0 0.4 millimeters for uh, ceramics, for enamel and transfer only. And so do we with, for example, this uh, molar here. Uh, just a little bit of uh, enamel and we can work out the structure much better, much better. So I show you the workflow. I put it again on this little ceramic hole, bowl. Put this on near to this bridge. And as the plasma works, I begin to work too. I have here a plate. With ceramics and stains, colors. Let's move it a little bit around. Let the plasma work. And this side too. Okay, I think that's all right for the presentation. I will take this bridge with a zirconia tweezer so I don't put fat again on this bridge. And now I can show you a little bit of this stains right here. I just choose some color for good perspective so you can see all things the right way. To see how it flows evenly on the whole surface, it's wonderful. That's how we want to work. Nothing simpler than this. Maybe some effect. Just do some fast work here. So there are no drops, droplets or even areas without liquid because it's everywhere, okay? So you can uh, put the bag. Uh, you have uh, to do all of the bags that are necessary. So you don't save a bag, but what is the uh, uh, pro? That is, uh, you, you don't have to do corrective bags because the liquid is uh, evenly on the whole surf surface. So with one bag, it's done, okay? And now, water. Okay. Let's give it a little touch. 
to get on the whole surface. Have some hairs, problems, still hairs. Okay. Then, hopefully, so, took the ceramic and put it where you want it. It's for enamel, it's for transfer effects, all you want to close just for you. Of course, ceramic uh, to flow, it's, it's not such difficult, uh, but the plasma make it easier, okay? And you can too, uh, you can apply it on the full contour zirconia crown too, how I said, for the better structure, for the workout after this bake. So you see that the good results, I think. You can do it inside the oven, oven and do your bake. Okay, so this is done. Let me put this aside. And to the next step, we come to this abutment cementation with a zirconia crown. We uh, use, to simplify uh, the work, uh, we put on the abutment some Teflon tape to save the areas when we are sandblasting it. Okay, and the Teflon tape is inside of the abutment too, and of the inside of the crown too. That's our workflow. We work with this. Steps good. And show you the draw of the Teflon after I cementated the crown in the abutment. So here again, the stand table, it works for me. The plasma activates the surface. And while uh, that's all done, I can uh, mix on my cement. Just for showcase. Okay. Instrument. Mix it all right. Okay. That's it. That's enough. The abutment, it's clean, very deep, very nice. It's free from uh, from oil and grease. Cement everywhere. Don't have to use much because of the plasma. It flows everywhere. Okay. Now I'll take the crown. Complete cement. The cementation is without a model because the future is modelless. And now fix it. The stand. Remove the overflow everywhere. Okay. Now for the for this case, I open it for time reason. And now I show you the pros of Teflon. Put this inside and you see it comes all the way out. Just remove it like a bottle of wine. Okay, that's one is a little bit harder. Get but it comes, it's easier than uh, cotton, in my opinion. But this maybe it's little, yeah, so the whole part comes apart. Okay, so this is done. 
Um, uh, next thing we prepared is the PMA acetal peak, the synthetic materials. You can also work on synthetic materials, like here this prothesis. I can open here with the stand again to make it for easier for me. And just clean the surface. Just activate it. Ultra fine cleans. Breathability is optimized just a little bit. Okay, turn it off. I will again use this color for, sh for show reasons. You see it better. You see how perfectly it flows equally to every place. Okay, and it works for a uh, high performance for a high functional uh, polymers like Peak or others. Uh, for peaks, you have uh, to use the bonder too, because um, the the study is not so enough. If that's uh, plasma is enough to uh, bond everything, okay? So you activate the surface. Again, uh, zirconia tweezer everywhere you want. Two, and then just an example using Bonder to activate the surface, and that's it. You can do plasma everywhere. It's for all materials. It's uh, have everywhere pros. Okay, failures. So that's good. And now, yeah. ah, another example for. Fully carbonate or PMMAs as a bite blend. Oh, a little bit dirty here. So, a bite blend uh, combined with silicone. It's for a sport, a high functional bite blend. And all of you know that the uh, combination of hard structure like PMMA and a weak like silicone, uh, it don't want to connect very well, yes? So you can uh, work with plasma here too. But again, uh, the, the uh, producer of the silicone um, will give you a bonder too. So use it, okay? But it makes very simpler the way the plasma for all, all things. Nice. Good. The next step is for uh, dentists. For implants and chair side. So I will start with this implant. There are a lot of implants, zirconia from many firms. Okay, I will show you one case how an implant hat is plasma activated and another case without it. Yes. Okay. Plasma again. Turn it on, put it under the plasma, Okay, maybe it should be enough for the effect. It's just for showing this effect, the implant. You see, wow, great, such greatness. And that's uh, for you to show how the, the blood inside a uh, human when an implantation uh, comes into the bones, the blood so, uh, goes around the implant equally everywhere. Perfect. And now I will show you without plasma, nothing happens. I can switch it, so maybe a little bit will be inside, but 
there is no effect of this readability, of this optimized readability. Okay, and the next one for the tests two, chair side productions. You can use this uh, little tool, the simple tool for all of your works. We have here veneers, we have crowns, we have zirconia retainers everywhere, okay? Just turn it on. Again, this table is just a pro for this little guy. So you can activate the surface, deep clean it, ultra fine cleaning, free from fat and grease, and perfect for cementation after this. Okay. So I think from my side, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And it was all thing understandable and easy because this tool is easy too. <laughs> and one thing, uh, you can rely on Plasma. <laughs> so if there's uh, some questions or more, just let it happen. Thank you so much, Alexander, for your lovely presentation. We're all very thrilled here, the three girls <laughs> that are in Regensburg. Very happy to have you on board um, and your, your brilliant applications that you showed us. So let's have a look at um, the audience. Are there any questions towards Alexander and his applications that he showed in great detail? So I think um, the, the last bit where you showed the implants is especially interesting. As I said, I already teased a bit about tomorrow's webinar. Um, so um, yes, thank you very yes. much. For tomorrow, yeah. it's, you see yeah. how perfect it goes to all the, of the structure of the implant Absolutely. everywhere. I just hold it inside of it and the liquid goes its own way. Yeah, it goes on thread perfectly. Yeah, excellent. So I think really it's it's great to have this first step in, in the dental lab. And as I said, we have a lot of customers already that are doing similar applications as you do. And um, we have only had a little peek into your community, but we find it is a great community to learn from. So uh, learning uh, with each other and together and uh, from each other. So uh, very thankful for the uh, for the presentation here. You're welcome. So here's one feedback. Hello from Canada. Thank you. This is fantastic. I feel oh so, brilliant. Well, I we can only say yes to that. Perfect. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I will collect the questions and answer it in the end session. If you have okay. any questions. And please type it in the, the question field and then we will answer all of them later on. Perfect. We, we have Alexander on, on standby if that's okay. So um, if there's questions um, after Eva's part, then we'll, we'll be getting back to you. Uh, and thank you again back to Canada for your feedback. That was lovely. Um, Thanks for right. watching. <laughs> thank you. All right. Um, so we'll. Check and see how Regensburg is in terms of connection. Have a look. Hi. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, perfect. All right. So um, I still owe you. I still owe you um, the presentation of Pizza Brush, but I'll I'll keep it as a cliffhanger. Okay, we're gonna do it now. It was, uh, Andrea says we're gonna do it now. So we're gonna do it now. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Come to me, come to me, join me, join me here. Here, my little mascot is still here. He's, he's also very sad that he didn't get to see uh, the unboxing, but we'll, we'll do this now, all right, Plasma? We're all fine. All right, so, as I said, open box, first thing, uh, manual, of course. And the manual is something that uh, I usually ignore, as I said. But you can see here what I mentioned beforehand, are these adapters. So you're um, feasible to use this uh, tool all over the world. And uh, here, of course, in Regensburg, 
we just need the European socket. So pull this out and plug it in. And basically, we just plug it in here to the back of the device. And now we see our logo lighting up. Now it says no module insertion. We talked a bit about the modules, and this is now the real deal. You can see it here. This is for non conductive materials. I hope this is in focus at some point. And we'll basically we'll be inserting this module in the front here. We'll be taking it in here. And now, as I said, we'll be able to see um, that display telling us we have the standard module and uh, the stopwatch as a default. All right, so, um, okay. So we'll kick it off with the material that I wanted to show you in the first place and use this as a little prop. And uh, we'll start off with the material that, that I know very well. This is ABS. This is something that our automotive customers use. And on the other side, we'll be using this material, which is PMMA, which you already, already saw in Alexander's presentation, but only these are lab samples here. So um, here goes. These lab samples have a protective layer on them. As I explained earlier, um, these materials are perfectly clean, so you can see they're pristine, but they still have some issues, and I'll be showing them to you, and I'll also be showing you how the plasma works. So basically, plug and play, so hit that button, and you can see the plasma igniting here. This is the Seraplas element, and you can see why we call it a piezo brush. So really, we want to brush over the surface fairly closely at moderate speed. You're free to really go the way you want here. Uh, little shapes, same over here. And what we're going to show you here is the effect of activation. This is actually something that uh, Eva will be talking more about. Um, on these two materials, you cannot see any difference. Even if you put them under the microscope, you won't see a difference between plasma treated and not plasma treated material. But we just use this little liquid. Um, this is just water in our uh, color that we've colored in. And you can see clearly now what happens if we use the water as an indicator for the plasma treatment. And as well on the ABS, here you can see it, we get a closed film of water on the side where we treated the material. And on the untreated side, we get this beading of the droplets that also kind of messes up our glazing or color individualization of the zirconia implants. And the same here on the PMMA, where we get these beading together. You can imagine this is no good for bonding if this would be, for example, an adhesive. So, um, to show you an illegal way of using the device would be to use, as I say, the standard module on conductive material. Uh, and because I don't have any of the fancy dental materials, I'll just go with stainless steel. And now I forgot that I use the standard module and I'm going to just go in and try and treat this material. And you will see, just a second, uh, we need to switch back to failure. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So the default setting would be that you go here and you get an error. You even get an acoustic feedback that tells you something is wrong. So um, when discussing earlier that sometimes you have composites, you can switch this mode from failure to warning. We're in failure now. We can go to warning. In this case, you can have a longer go at it, but you will see the lighting up of the yellow square here. So it's not something you really want to do. In this case, we really want to use the near field module. Back into our little box. Take this out. You can see that we chose the labels for conductive material. Basically, just press both little buttons on the side, pull out the module, insert 
the other module. And now you're ready to go. And again, uh, I'm going to switch back to failure mode to show you the significance here. If we have it running, you can see it running, you can see it already being yellow. After a while, it's going to switch off because we weren't close enough to the material. So this is the proper way to go about things. You can see it lighting up in green now. This is the way things should be. Again, moving fairly closely over the surface and treating this little part of our sample. And again, also on the stainless steel, we see the effects of fine cleaning here, where the wettability is again our, our little indicator that where we didn't treat the material, we get this beading of the droplets. And on the other side, the uniform um, film of water that shows the wettability that we want to have. All right, so uh, now I've made a big mess here. I'm very sorry. You don't have to clean it up, though. Um, yeah, so as I say, you can, if you get the device or if you have the device, some of you I know have it, um, just be aware that really make use of that display. Also, um, you're able to use the different modes here. You can switch in through those uh, power settings, time settings. Feel free to play. Um, this is a great tool with lots of options. Um, and it's been very successful in the industrial applications. And now we see it being very successful in the dental applications. And that's my cue to hand over. I'm going to have another little look at you before I hand over to Eva. And Eva will, as I say, give you a little overview of the, the arc from industrial to dental in uh, the research in the academic field. So take it away. Thank you, Karina, for the nice introduction. Thank you for joining us in this webinar. And uh, as Corina just uh, told you, I will um, tell you now something about the scientific backgrounds of these uh, surface activations. And uh, I will start in the industrial um, field. So uh, in, we are coming from the industrial technology. We know this field very well. Um, but um, in the dental technology, there are special requirements uh, demanded of materials and composites. You know, you have all these high performance uh, materials. However, the underlying processes are often very similar to those in the industrial scenarios. So in industrial scenarios, you have all kinds of conventional materials like, uh, for example, polypropylene, where you make up uh, all different kinds of stuff, or the ABS Corina just showed you. Um, and there you do, for example, printing, but all, as well adhesive bonding. And you've just seen uh, in the presentation Alex uh, Alexander did that adhesive bonding is uh, just as um, important in the dental lab. Going further to the dental uh, field, you um, will reach at some point the field of bioactivity. Well, bioactivity is not uh, so important for uh, industrial uh, technology, but you will see that some of the underlying uh, processes are still very similar. So um, in the following, I will uh, present to you some of the, some of re of the relevant um, scientific papers of the last years. Um, in the field of uh, surface activation uh, with the pizza brush. And I will start off just with a paper just published this year. And it, uh, it deals with the uh, wetting and adhesion on uh, polypropylene. And uh, in this paper, they, compare, uh, they compared two methods. First of all, the better radiation and uh, the, cold plasma atmosphere, uh, the cold atmospheric plasma. You, I put some uh, pictures of the devices used here. So you see the better uh, radiation system 
it's quite big. It's not something you want to put into your lab. However, you've seen the uh, applications with the uh, piece of rush, piece of three. So this device is quite handy uh, compared to this um, better, better radiation device. So first of all, um, after treating the polypropylene, um, in this paper, uh, the water contact angle was investigated. So you see here uh, in the reference, so in the untreated sample, you have a contact angle of about 90 degree. And depending on the plasma power you're using, so uh, they actually just did not only use the 100% power option, but as well the lower power options, you see that there's a uh, well, be uh, well better adhesion or well um, better co contact angle of the water. This um, is also shown in the surface energy. So the surface energy you basically just get out from measuring contact angles of different li liquids. And uh, you see here two colors of the contact of the surface energy. First of all, the gray color, which is the dispersed part, and the yeah, uh, and the pink color, which is the polar part. And the polar part is the part which is really the important part, because most of the interactions between uh, the adhesives and uh, the substrates are of polar nature. So you see here that the surface energy is increased for uh, both the better, treat, better radiation, but as well for the plasma treatment. But uh, you get even higher polar fractions for the plasma treated circuits. So you can tell uh, the wetting behavior is positive, positive, positively uh, affected uh, by the plasma treatment. So what is the underlying chemical process? We see here an infrared spectra of the sample, and you see, well, basically there's not so much change in it. You see the main peaks, they are all quite similar. However, there are two parts of the, uh, of the spectra which are quite different, where the absorbance is much higher. One of these parts is, uh, is the part of the hydroxyl groups, so the OH groups, and the other part is of the carbon groups. So these are both uh, oxygen containing groups, which are therefore polar. And here the absorbance is increased by the plasma treatment as well as with the beta radiation, indicating that you have a higher polar fraction in the surface. So this is nothing different than just um, you saw before, uh, the figure below you see, you've seen before today, it's just the functionalization of the surface. So you introduce uh, oxygen-containing groups in this, uh, onto the surface and thus have a better vitality. So what is this doing with the bonding? So if they measured the load of break of, uh, of bonded PP. And you see uh, the untreated sample uh, has a very low load of break of only 1.47 mega, megapascal. With a, both the beta radiation and the plasma treatment, the load of break is much enhanced. And uh, therefore, both met, met, methods uh, increase the wettability and the adhesion of, on the difficult materials polypropylene and keeping in mind that the um, beta radiation is such a big and large device, it's really nice to see that such a small device like the piece of brush feeder 3 can compare with uh, these results. So coming to a material that you are probably a little bit more familiar with than with PP, so uh, here is some work from the Hochschule Osnabrück, and uh, they uh, compared the surface modification of peak um, via sanding, low pressure plasma, and atmospheric pressure plasma. 
And uh, here the, again, the surface roughness, the surface energy, and the adhesion was measured. And um, in these three figures, you see the you see AM pictures of the surface, and you might wonder why don't you see the sand samples? Well, the sand samples are just way too rough with the um, for investigating it with AFM. However, taking a look at the um, plasma treated samples and the reference, you see that there is not much difference in roughness. So the surface roughness of peak is barely affected by the plasma treatment. So taking a look at the surface energy, you see the untreated peak sample has well, a surface energy of about 40, but more interestingly, it has only almost only a dispersed uh, fraction of the surface energy and almost no polar contribution. This changes with all three surface uh, modifications. However, you see for the sample sample, the um, overall surface energy is quite low. However, you have some pol polar fraction. And for the two plasma treated samples, you get quite high surface energies. And uh, this results again in a better adhesion. This was measured with a with a tensile sh shear test. And uh, you see, well, sanding is maybe not a bad choice for increasing the surface ad adhesion. It's at least a very easy method. However, you get better results with a low pressure plasma and even better results with the atmospheric plasma. And this is quite interesting because with the low pressure plasma, um, in this work, um, it uh, was applied for one minute at 80 watt. And, um, in the, the piezo brush uh, just takes um, one minute and eight watt. So this is quite nice. So even on uh, such a material as peak, you can use a uh, cold atmospheric plasma to functionalize the surface and to improve, improve the adhesion. Today, we have heard quite a bit about uh, zirconia. So, you know, zirconia is used in all branches of te te dental technology. And here is some work on uh, zirconia, which was pretreated by three or by two different methods and the combination of it. So, um, here the untreated samples were compared with a sand blasted uh, probe. It was sun blasted with uh, 50 mu of uh, aluminium. Um, and then it was another probe was treated with um, cold plasma. And uh, the fourth probe was, treated, well, was first sun blasted and then plasma treated. And uh, the surface roughness was determined and as well as the bonding with composite cement. And well, as you expected, um, as you've seen before for the other materials as well, you see, okay, the sand blasting is doing quite a bit with the surface roughness, but uh, the pure plasma treatment is doing almost nothing to the surface roughness. So this is especially, again, um, important for uh, polished surfaces. So um, if you have a polished surface and tr treat it with plasma, it will still be polished. However, of course, you have want to have a good bond strength. And um, you see here, okay, plasma is doing quite a good job. Sun blasting is doing it as well, quite okay. But the better combination is uh, the sun blasted, the samples which were first sun blasted and then plasma treated. So the adhesion of the cornea can be significantly improved uh, by the plasma treatment. You've just seen it uh, before with a presentation from Alexander. So there, it's it was not uh, the case of adhesion, but more of uh, wetting. This is are all the same forces which are play a role, which are playing a role. So the wetting of um, and adhesion of zirconia can be very well increased. I've promised uh, you to um, spend. Uh, white art from industrial to, well, going even into the medical field a little bit. And here the bioactivity plays an important role. 
you've seen uh, the treatment of uh, the implant from Alexander. So um, for implants, of course, the wetting is quite important, but uh, the stuff that really plays a role is the bioactivity. So how fast uh, is the implant growing into the bone? So um, here uh, we have some work where um, this was uh, tested. Um, first of all, again, of course, the zirconia surface was um, characterized and then uh, they followed with in vitro and even in vivo studies of the zirconia. So what is it doing? We are first taking a look at the water contact angle. You see the untreated sample, um, you have a water contact angle of about 90 degrees. Uh, in the treated sample, well, you see you, that you see nothing. Uh, we have complete wetting and uh, the wa water contact angle is uh, zero. So we, um, so the plasma converted the quite hydrophobic surface to a super hydrophilic surface. Uh, the roughness, again, there was not so much uh, change. So here it was measured with scanning probe microscopy. Um, so you can see the wetting behavior is again significantly improved by the plasma treatment while keeping the surface rough, roughness, roughness uh, equal. So how is it uh, doing with the uh, adsorption? You see here uh, the in vitro studies and uh, on the top you see a plot of the adsorption of bovine serum albumin which is a quite commonly used uh, protein for such investigations. And you see in the gray, the untreated sample and in red, the treated uh, sample. And you see that uh, the protein adsorption is much enhanced by the plasma, even um, after 24 hours, so after one day, you have about one third more um, proteins already accumulated at the surface. Um, in the bottom, you see uh, as well the behavior of uh, cells. It, um, here measured with uh, Florence microscopy, and uh, you see well on the left side there are not so many cells, and on the right side well there are already a bunch of cells adhered to the surface. So the in vitro studies indicate a good healing behavior of the implants. This of course, must be um, analyzed by in vivo studies because well, what you're doing in the lab um, might be quite nice, but uh, what, what the real world is doing might be sometimes different. In this case, it's not. So here you um, see um, an taconia implant uh, implanted into, a, into the finger of rats. And at the top, you see the untreated sample, and in the bottom, you see the pl plasma treated sample. So here, a CT was made. And um, after eight weeks, uh, you see at the top, around the red uh, zirconia implant, there is almost nothing, uh, no bone substructure formed. However, in the bottom, uh, around the plasma treated zirconia implant, there's already quite uh, some bone cells uh, accumulated and the healing is already quite, uh, quite far. So last but not least, uh, I'm coming to a, another material that you're very familiar with, where to titanium. And uh, well, titanium is the well, probably the most common uh, material for dental implants, for example. And uh, here, titanium plates were examined with respect to surface properties and biocompatibility. And uh, two methods were compared, UV light and uh, cold atmospheric plasma. And uh, in this case, the cell adsorption was measured with a little bit different method with a quartz, uh, crystal microbalance. So again, the surface roughness, who is, I think nobody is any more surprised. Uh, you see that not much has changed. 
Then the water contact angle, um, you are again starting off with the water contact angle of about 90 degrees. Um, with a UV treated uh, sample, I still see some very uh, low droplet. With a plasma treated sample, I don't see any droplet anymore. So we are increasing uh, the surface wettability um, quite well. Furthermore, an XPS uh, analysis was performed. And um, you see in grey the titanium. So in the XPS analysis, you just uh, scan the topmost uh, layers of uh, molecules or atomic uh, distributions. And um, you see in the, the grey titanium here, in the untreated sample, well, there is not so much in the topmost layer. Mostly there is uh, carbon and oxygen. So you have some organic residues on the surface. By treating the samples, uh, you have two effects. First of all, the um, titanium comes more to the surface, so the gray fraction of uh, this diagram increases. Uh, meanwhile, the um, orange uh, fraction, which is uh, carbon, um, decreases. So um, in the untreated sample, it makes up almost the half of the um, signal. In uh, the UV treated sample, it's already uh, quite well reduced. And with the plasma treated sample, you see uh, that almost all the carbonous uh, material is um, gone away. What happened to it? Well, it got oxidized with the reactive uh, gas from the plasma and uh, just uh, turned into volatile um, molecules just uh, being away from the surface. So uh, if you have a fine cleaning of the surface uh, performed through the plasma and the UV treatment. So again, the biocompatibility was measured here. So here you see uh, the uh, adhesion of uh, RBM salts. You see in the control after one hour, there uh, are much less salts um, adhered than uh, in the UV treated sample and even more in the plasma treated sample. The same effect you can see in the bottom with the fluorescence uh, pictures. Here you see uh, the untreated sample has much lower cell concentrations than the plasma treated sample. One thing I um, find very interesting about this are the treatment times. So with UV, the treatment was performed for 15 minutes. And with plasma, the treatment was performed for 30 seconds. And you all know um, there is never so much time to uh, make so anything really perfectly. So um, to do it really good, um, you, you might want to use the plasma activation of it. OK, so with this, I'm coming to uh, my end. So there are several scientific papers showing the effects of plasma in the dental field. And uh, fortunately, um, so it's very nice for us to read these papers because uh, basically all the papers I've seen, uh, there are positive effects in the dental field with the plasma. And um, all the papers I've presented to you today are the results based on results um, achieved with the PISA-BRAF PISA-2 and the PISA-BRAF PISA-3. So the PISA-2 was just uh, the device we had before, but what it, it was based on the same technology. I've shown you that uh, many materials in the dental laboratory were studied by um, the research, including, uh, for example, peak, zirconia, and titanium. And uh, you, you've seen that well, the effects are very similar to each other. So um, typically, with treating a surface with plasma, you increase the wettability and thus the adhesion and the bioactivity with only very minor changes to um, other surface properties, such as roughness. So this is very important for uh, yeah, all uh, polished surfaces and so on. And um, by looking through the um, literature, I uh, saw that there's only very li limited uh, literature for the color individualization, 
which you've seen uh, in the video from Karina and in the presentation from Alexander. So um, I'm curious why this is this is this case, and I'm encouraging everybody uh, who's in the science. Um, maybe you want to do some work on this color um, individualization, individualization with uh, dental materials. And I want to end with a quote from uh, Rosie Young, um, who is yeah, underlying this um, great effect. So uh, she said, in the, ca in the case of ceramics and zirconia chromes, after a brief surface cleaning with, plasma, with a plasma unit prior to stain glazing, there's a completely different acceptance of the glaze material. I have the feeling that the applied layers literally nest into any surface texture and no longer, longer repel due to its surface tension. So this is just what I've shown you. It's just the wetting um, and here the application of the color individualization is quite interesting. Before ending completely, I want to give you a short outlook uh, for tomorrow. So. Uh, Tomorrow we have two webinars on uh, the treatment of uh, dental implants and uh, you've seen it from Alexander and here you see it again in the video. So uh, the plasma treated dental implants have a much better wetting and as well in the um, literature you see it and we have in the morning in, or in German time morning we have a um, webinar at uh, 10 o'clock on this uh, topic where we also will introduce to you our implant prep concept. This will be in German and for all the English speaking uh, people and all those of, from other time zones, uh, especially from the Americas, uh, we have in the afternoon, so in the morning for the US, for example, um, in the English webinar. So with this, I, I'd like to thank you for your attention and for your attendance. And we have a lot and of questions here. Okay. So. <laughs> so the first one is, can someone of you guys explain the previous approaches uh, used in dentistry before the use of plasma and the efficiency? So I think um, that Eva um, brought in some of the I'd say conventional processes like sanding or sandblasting and we also saw with Alexander that primer is still a big so. issue so interestingly enough these are all processes that we also know from the industrial applications and we have pretty much been able to uh, assist and replace them with the plasma technology so I hope we'll be able to do the same here assist and replace difficult processes with uh, cold plasma. And is there any material you can treat with plasma? I'm going to say no. <laughs> no. <laughs> there might not be always uh, perfect uh, results. So for example, PPFE is quite challenging, but still you see some uh, uh, Teflon, you might know it under this name a little bit better. Um, so you still see even some effects on uh, materials like Teflon, but uh, basically you can treat any material. You see most of the time or almost every time you see positive effects on the bedding. It, it really depends on your follow-up process, I would say. Yeah. So we've seen with some materials, PTFE is one of them, Palm is the other one, that we can improve wettability but not always adhesion. But if that, again, depends then on the adhesive that you use. Yeah. So, but these are very special cases. Yeah. So uh, there's a broad range of uh, materials. We uh, we have a big shelf with all kinds of samples. And uh, we see on every of, of these samples, we see positive effects. So again, here the encouragement, uh, get your own device and we also offer rentals uh, so you can really if you have something and you're curious to try uh, just get in touch with us. So if is there the possibility to send some applications materials to you that you do some testing in your lab or is it just at the own site possible? 
again, we typically recommend, so that's definitely possible, we have an application lab here, but again, we focus a lot on industrial applications. So Eva and myself, we do contact angle measurements, we use testings, but in the end, it's the follow-up process really that's important. So yeah, and uh, furthermore, we have the option of rentals, and uh, there you can rent uh, this device for two weeks for 300 euros. And uh, here, uh, then you can try these uh, tests in your own lab and have time to evaluate your process and, if, uh, and evaluate if this uh, device is doing the work for you. Okay. Um, another question. Um, would it be possible to treat conductive surfaces from a longer distance to modify the surface to avoid using the near field module, or do you always have to use the near field module? So I would definitely recommend using the near field model. If you're too far away, say, if there's something that you can't really reach, um, the effects of the, the secondary plasma gases or the downstream plasma will also be there. Of course, they are more pronounced the higher their concentration is. So if you do that in some kind of enclosed space, um, you will have higher effects. But yeah. So you've just seen the cups that uh, Alexander was using. So here the uh, effluent is uh, circulating a little bit around the sample and you get almost a treatment around uh, the entire sample. So um, this is helping. But typically we recommend to use uh, the near field nozzle, especially because uh, using the standard nozzle is not the recommended uh, use for on conductive materials. And regarding biocompatibility, is the plasma treatment made before or after the sterilization of the implants or the samples? Depends on your sterilizing process. So if we're talking about, so we, we are looking into sterilization disinfection topics as well here. Um, we're, we're doing a lot of research here as well. I would definitely recommend going after the sterilization process. Typically, yeah, especially if you're using uh, wet sterilizations. Uh, so in this case, we would definitely do the plasma treatment after the uh, sterilization process. Or autoclaving. Or, autoclaving or anything, uh, including uh, well, a wet face. Yeah. For example, um, something that always comes up as well is how long does a treatment like that last on the surface? And um, here it is very important to know the conditions. Yep. So especially if you heat up a sample that you just plasma treat, treat it, you can get rid of that activation fairly quickly because these are just kinetic processes that lead to um, the destruction of these groups that we built on. So um, that's another reason why, for example, thinking of the Oshaklav now, um, we would recommend doing it after. So and how much does this device cost? Uh, the device costs 2,400 euro. And what's included in this price? So this is just uh, what Karina showed you today. So she gets this nice box. And right now it's empty because <laughs> 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 uh, I picked everything up. In this, uh, you will find this plasma device with two nozzles. So this is the near field nozzle. And this is the standard nozzle, so you can treat with this uh, device all, um, all modules. Then you will get a standard power plug. However, as we know that uh, there are people from all over the world, we include as well all the international adapters to it. So you, you get basically a ready to go kit. Um, of course, you have um, the um, instructions here on top of it so uh, yes that's what you will get okay. and are there any other modules available or just those two modules currently there are just these two modules we are uh, currently however developing some other modules uh, i think karina you mentioned it earlier for example a multi-gas module where you can apply noble gases or um, as well, maybe uh, for example, a um, needle module where you can do some very distinct uh, activations of small areas. 
So uh, we are current, we are always developing new modules. So just uh, check our website. You will always find something new on it. And also these new modules will be compatible with the device that you get today. Exactly. So yes. um, if you remember the little contact board on our modules, this is where all the information so, is, is saved. So in the in modules you have here a lead from and the module is saving all the relevant information. This device without the module is quite stupid. It uh, does not really know so much, but through plugging the module in, this uh, device becomes becomes smart. So you can uh, buy any from any generation of this Pisa uh, Pisa Rush Pisa Three. You can buy newer modules. And are the modules variables or do they have a specific lifetime? They do have a specific lifetime. So currently we're still in a testing phase where we're doing durability testing. Uh, we're at a thousand hours of lifetime. We can definitely say yes to now. Um, um, it's funny because it's running just in the in yep. the other lab behind us. So I think we surpassed 1,500 hours. So. so for a handheld device, you'll be safe to say that uh, this is a very good lifetime. Furthermore, if uh, the module, um, if there anything happens to it, well, you ju we'll just get a new one, put, pull it out, plug it in, and you're ready to go. Okay, that's it for the moment. I think we'll wait one more minute if another question comes in. If not, everyone can send the questions to our email addresses or via social media. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I would want to thank you. all of you again. Andrea doing all this uh, work in the back. So uh, she's uh, basically doing all the work uh, <laughs> occurring in the webinar. Karina do away this nice presentation. Stefan for the introduction and uh, of course Alexander for this great presentation of uh, the applications. All the scientific background is never anything worth if there's no uh, application. So we need people like you who are doing this uh, application. And most of all, I would like of course to thank you, uh, dear audience, for listening, uh, asking these interesting questions. So if you're, uh, if any questions come up to your mind uh, later on, just contact uh, any of us or uh, just our info email or anything. Just give us a call or anything. We will. We are always happy to help. So thank you very much, and uh, I hope we will hear soon from each other. Thank you.